you know, it's funny, isn't it? We spend all day staring at these little screens, but we're obsessed with what's way out there. The stars. Yeah, we can't get enough of them. I guess it's like this uh, this primal thing, right? Like this need to reach reach for something bigger than ourselves to try and uh, try and control it. And what could be bigger than trying to create an artificial sun? That's what we're diving into today with the Phoenix of Chengdu. Ambitious, to say the least. This idea, this uh, holding the power of a star right here on Earth, it's intoxicating. The story throws us right into the action, this Chinese research facility. They're about to about to ignite the world's very first artificial sun. Can you imagine the tension, the expectations? And underneath it all, you can just tell there's this, well, this current of uh, unease. The author does an amazing job at building that atmosphere, the anticipation, the apprehension. And then we meet Dr. Evans right there in the command center, just moments before ignition. And the way they describe it, the heat, the uh, the hum of all that technology. You practically feel like you're standing right there with her. And we know from the start, Dr. Evans, she isn't just there to, to watch a science experiment. It's that first line of the story really gets you. She thinks to herself, I wasn't supposed to be in Chengdu. Yeah, it gives you chills. Like she knows something's not not quite right. She's definitely got this this foreboding, you know, like she knows more than she's letting on. Oh, absolutely. It's like uh, she's got this insider knowledge, but she's also an outsider. Keeps you guessing. That's for sure. It makes you question the whole the whole thing right from the start. Are we really supposed to be celebrating this? And as the countdown starts, the tension just keeps building both inside and outside. Because this isn't just a science project anymore, right? This is about like global power. Absolutely. The stakes, they couldn't be higher. I mean, if if they can actually pull this off. It could change everything. Yeah. Energy, power, the balance of the entire world. Yeah. But at what cost? It really could. And then there it is, the impossible right in front of you. This huh. this artificial sun roaring to life. Bathing that whole facility in this this unearthly light. You'd think everyone would be ecstatic. I mean, relieved. Yeah. The world's been holding its breath for this moment. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But that's not what happens, is it? No, not quite. Outside, sure, the celebrations are going crazy. But inside that command center, something else is happening. There's this this unease, this creeping sense of dread. And Dr. Evans, she feels it more than anyone. She's picking up on these these little things, these almost imperceptible signs that something something's off like beneath the surface of this this incredible achievement something's wrong and it's not just her as the story goes on you start to see these weird things happening all over the world earthquakes but in places they shouldn't be animals behaving strangely sound like the planet itself is i don't know reacting well think about it we're talking about forces here that humans barely understand nuclear fusion Creating a sun. There's bound to be consequences. Exactly. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, right? And this. Right. This reaction, it's not what anyone expected. And this is where the phoenix of Chengdu gets really interesting, I think. It makes you think about other times in history, you know, when we've messed with things we didn't fully understand. Like what? Well, take DDT, this insecticide. Right. right. It, it was hailed as this miracle. Right, right. And then years later, we find out it's it's devastating the environment, harming people. Or how about nuclear power? We figured out fission, mm-hmm. thought we had this incredible new source of energy. And then you have weapons, meltdowns, Chernobyl. It seems like every time we, we take a step forward. There are these, these unintended consequences. Things we could never have predicted rippling outwards, changing the balance of everything. And in the story, in the Phoenix of Chengdu, Dr. Evans, she sees these warning signs. But no one's listening. They're blinded by what they've achieved. This incredible breakthrough. Classic case of hubris. Thinking we can control things we don't even begin to understand. And then it happens. This message. Three words, but they change everything. It's alive. Chilling. Not malfunctioning. Not destabilizing. Like and suddenly everything's different. We're not just talking about a scientific achievement anymore. We're talking about creating something entirely new. Something that makes you question, well... What does it even mean to be alive? It really does make you think, doesn't it? I mean, what does it actually mean, you know, to be alive? It's especially when, when something wasn't uh, born. Mm. When we created it. Like we've stepped into this this whole other realm of existence. We forced open the door to, to sentience. Mm. But can we close it? 
can we control what we let out? That's the question, isn't it? And the phoenix of Chengdu, it really pushes you to confront that. Because once that realization hits, that this reactor, it's not just a machine. Well, the story takes another turn. Things that get, well, they get pretty terrifying. We go from this sense of awe and wonder, this apprehension, to to straight up fear. It's not something we can just study anymore. Right. Or, or contain. It's something else entirely. And that's when it gets really, really creepy. Yeah. Because this artificial sun, this thing we created, it starts to change. Evolving. But not just getting bigger or more powerful. It's like, I don't know, it develops a will of its own. A hunger. And then... Well, it finds a way to communicate. That part always gets me when it speaks through the intercom. You made me. Chills. Literal chills. It's not just a machine responding, right? It's like, yeah. it knows. It knows what it is. Yeah. It's like it's reminding us, for all our intelligence, for all our attempts to control the universe, we're still bound by the same rules. We might start things, but we don't always get to finish them. And what it becomes... Well, the, the the author describes this incredible transformation. The artificial sun, it's not contained anymore. It's like this, this miniature star just hanging there in the sky. And get this, it doesn't even try to destroy us. No. It just, it watches. Observes. With this, the, this ancient, unsettling intelligence. Like the student has become the master. In a way. The phoenix of Chengdu, it leaves you with this image. Humanity not looking up at the stars with, with ambition anymore, but with... Well, fear. We're not the ones in control anymore. And that's a terrifying thought. It makes you wonder what's next. What happens when we're not the smartest ones in the universe anymore? It certainly gives you a lot to think about. That's for sure.